Hey everyone, welcome to week three of building my own studio at home. I'm actually making some really great progress. As you can see, the green screen's uh, up and running. It's got some good lighting to it. I also have some good room lighting on the other side. So things are looking up. There's been a few hiccups in terms of getting product delivered to the house and getting things ready, but as usual, you're learning as you go. And there's quite a few things to learn. And um, you know, I was thinking that I would be done in like another week or two, but it's probably gonna be a little bit longer than that. Um, there's definitely some things where you think you know how it's going to be set up and you think you know how it's going to look like but then reality sets in and you realize okay there's a few more moving parts that I'm going to need to think my way through or buy certain accessories in order to make it all work uh, last week I talked about building my scaffolding system and I thought it was going to be a lot more complicated than what it was, but it ended up being pretty easy. As you can tell, uh, my grip arms, I called them boom poles before, that's actually the wrong name to them. If you called them uh, boom poles, you actually, when you Google it or when you try to search for buying extra extensions, you're not going to find what you want. But if you call them grip arms, you will find what you want, and that's what you're looking for. But all I had to do was I just had to buy these um, basically these are adapters it's a fourth on one side and three eighths on the other and on these grip arms up here they have a fourth on one side and an eighth on the other so all I needed to do was grab those extensions and uh, put them together and now I have a nice long nine feet extension all the way across giving me a really great support structure up top as you can see on this side I kind of put a boom pole from uh, my C stands all the way back to my green screen stand. So now I can actually um, mount what I would call either a hair light or you know a, a backlight uh, onto this boom pole wherever I'm standing to be, to be able to separate myself or me from the green screen. Now what you see is there are two C stands or two grip heads right here. And what I want to do is I want to actually extend the boom poles to go all the way to this boom pole in the back. And right now, uh, I actually had two of these C-stands on order to build out my back, but they only sent me one, so Amazon messed that up. So I'm waiting for my second C-stand to build basically a duplicate of what I did up here. And then with this one and this one over here, I can build out uh, basically two extensions that will go all the way to the back and this will give me basically a railing system that I can use to mount lights, cameras. As you can see I was actually experimenting right here with um, basically an overhead camera and that's what I'm going to eventually attach to these uh, railings that are going to be going all the way to the back. Okay so I just want to very quickly show you what the overhead view looks like. So this right here is the type of light bulbs that I'll be using for uh, basically the room lighting right over there. So these are actually 5,500 Kelvin and they're actually quite large. Like a normal LED at this point is about this big. As you can tell, they are just, yeah, they're very large. These actually, you know, the new ones, the LEDs don't get very hot anymore. You can actually touch these while they've been on for a long time. These, after about 20 minutes of being on, you do not want to touch them. They are very hot. Definitely want a different camera to do this overhead view thing, but this is kind of an idea of what I've been working on. So my initial thoughts on actually getting this overhead camera working, I thought it was going to be really easy. Um, I'm reevaluating that right now after trying it a few times. There's going to be definitely some, I don't know, work to be done in terms of getting it set up correctly to where it's consistent, it's not wobbling, and it's a repeatable. So there's, it's a lot harder than I realize. So it's one of those things where I'm going to have to put a lot more effort into it to figure it out, but I definitely want it because that's going to be the only way where it's going to be easy to do like reviews on stuff on the table or to talk about anything on the table. So this is something that I'll be working on probably for quite a while. 
So let's go ahead and talk about lighting because lighting has been by far the most painful thing to figure out. Which, I mean, you kind of expect that to be honest with you. So these right here are good old flash and fluorescent lights. Uh, it's kind of dark because they're, they're putting out so much light. But uh, they basically allow me to flood the entire room full of light. And these particular light bulbs right here, um, they're actually 5,500 Kelvin. They're professional lights that you use. Here, let me go ahead, switch off those. And now you can see it a little bit better. So I can put quite a lot of lighting up there. But as you can see, I also have um, just standard light bulbs that you would use at home because you know, 5,500 Kelvin, they put out really great sunlight, but they're kind of harsh on the eyes. So, you know, during regular hours in which, you know, I'm just using this room as a normal room, I did put the standard warm lighting there. These are probably about 3,000 Kelvin, so a very nice, soft, warm light. And I don't know, it might actually be good for mood lighting if I wanted to switch back and forth, but uh, I really like the soft lighting, you know, just as a normal room temperature. But definitely when I'm recording, I definitely want the white light. These are actually CRI rated to be 91, so they're very good, very color controlled lighting. Up front here are some LED panels that I purchased. These are the newer 500 LEDs. Uh, they look to be working pretty well, but only time will tell when I actually look at the green screen uh, efforts. So I'm gonna have to go and edit that to see. They put out a ton of lighting. These are almost at 100%, and uh, they seem to be doing really well lighting up this green screen right here. So as you can see, the as the camera adjusts, it gives me a very nice green uh, for my green screen. So this right here is the first test of me being in front of my green screen. Uh, hopefully it looks good. We're gonna see it after post, whether or not I can actually change the video out uh, or the background out to something really nice. So here is my initial thoughts on lighting. Uh, when I first started this, I thought I had enough lighting planned out, but as I actually put in this lighting, I realized I still needed quite a few more things. Specifically, I wanted more warm light for my face, you know, because the, you know, 5,500 Kelvin, it's really great room light and it's nice and clear but something for like an individual like me, I'd really rather have some uh, color temperature lighting in which I can actually warm it up a little. That's why I have this light turned on right now. It's just that it casts a little bit of light towards me, but it's also nice and warm. So it's a little bit more, at least it's a little bit more flattering in my opinion for my face. So that's something that I'm gonna have to work on. So the lighting aspect of this room still needs a little bit more te tweaking. Other things that I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to work on the audio of it. So I'm actually not going to use this uh, particular boom pole right here for audio. This one is actually going to be for probably my main light for uh, lighting the subject. And I want to get that done hopefully sometime next week. So another thing that I'm going to be looking at is whether or not I need to soundproof the room a little bit or sound absorb some of the room. I think I definitely want to do the wall directly behind the camera because I'm speaking in that direction so having a little sound absorption probably isn't a bad idea. I've always wondered you know does this stuff actually work? I've actually purchased some of it just to measure out how much I would need. It doesn't seem like I would need too much to fill out that back wall but yeah it's gonna be an experiment on you know whether or not this stuff is actually you know really effective enough for me to actually want to cover this own whole entire room full of this stuff because that would get expensive but that is the next experiment along with uh, good sound quality that's definitely something I want since I'm in a home studio anyways I should have good sound quality and then lastly is to finish up the lighting some of the lighting that I want is actually out it's on back order so I'm gonna either have to find an alternative or I'm just gonna have to wait until they come back in stock, which could be a long time. So still a lot of work to do in order to get this studio 100% perfect the way I want it.